Hello everyone, Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my stamp room. Come on in, we're going to relax, we're going to craft together. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for making and sending handmade cards. You are making the world a kinder place, one card at a time, and I appreciate you all so much. Hopefully here you can get a little creative inspiration so that you want to make even more cards to get in the mail and send out those paper hugs. So thanks for all you're doing uh, to spread kindness in this crazy world that we live in. <laughs> um, we are going to make an Easter card tonight, a fun fold card. And so I'm excited to share that with you. We've been doing a few Easter projects on the last two videos. Easter is at the end of March. So it's one of those uh, holidays that you want to... Um, it's coming earlier this year than, than maybe we're used to. And so you do have to plan ahead for that one. So hoping to inspire you a little bit with um, some Easter projects. Now this fun fold card, you could easily adapt to uh, any occasion. In fact, um, I am basing it off a card I got in the mail that was a Christmas card. So I'll show that to you here in a moment. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Project sheet emails. A lot of you like to have a printable project sheet for the different projects and um, you can subscribe to that right here. I'm getting a lot of requests for the, uh, where is it? Easter bonnet card that we made in the last video, the Easter bonnet rocket card. I rocker, not rocket, Susan, true rocket, <laughs> rocker. See, it's a hat, me, hat. Easter bonnet. Um, so I, I will be doing a project sheet for this one and that will go out next week in the project sheet email. So that's where you can subscribe for that. Let's go ahead and get this party started. I'm going to go ahead and dive down to the desktop. I'd like to give a shout out to my wonderful moderator, Jennifer Walsh. She's hanging in the comments. Hey, Jennifer. She'll be dropping uh, here on YouTube, I should say. She'll be dropping in the dimensions and so forth and can help flag me down if you have a question. For our friends that are watching on Facebook, hey, so glad that you're here. You're either on my Facebook page, Susan Campfield, or Sue Stampfield, sorry, the Sue Stampfield Facebook page, or you're over in my Sue Stampfield Facebook group. I always post pictures of the projects that we make um, and the Sue Stampfield group the next morning. So um, if you're on Facebook, we'd love to have you jump in the group. Just do a search. Hmm. I can't talk tonight. Do a search for Sue Stamfield and you should find it. Let's go down to the desk here and take a look at what we are making uh, or what we're using tonight. So we're going to use the Excellent Eggs Bundle. Uh, we've been using this on the last few videos. Uh, two videos ago, we made this adorable. Whoa, hang on. I got little. <laughs> that is not supposed to be there. Ah, I have a messy desk, you guys. It is, it's, I tried to clean it and then I'm working on Crafternoon Alternate Projects. Crafternoon is this weekend, by the way, Saturday, 3 p.m. Central Time. It is a public video. Anyone is welcome to, to tune in. Some of you got a packet um, and you'll be making a project along with me, our fun fold card along with me in that video. Um, if you place an order in my online store of $50 or more, you qualify for the next month's of Crafternoon packet in the mail. So, um, there's top secret stuff all over my desk. I got to be really careful. <laughs> and whenever I'm creating, I make a huge mess. It is very true. Um, so this project we made a few days ago. And yeah, it was trying to be Easter and Valentine's. A little, little Valentine paper was sneaking in. It wanted a little bit of the spotlight. This would have made a cute Valentine box, actually. Um, inside, we've got the Reese's egg. So somebody did um, ask me on YouTube if... Um, if this would fit uh, a gift card, it is too short. A gift card is a little bit taller, um, but it's wide enough because if you angle it, so you could just adapt the box to be a little taller if you wanted to put a gift card in it. Um, if you go to this video and you look at the comments, um, the person that asked that question actually figured it out and she posted the measurements of how to adapt it to that bigger size. I also have the comment in the, in the description of that video the measurements for this particular box. So check that out. Uh, Linda's going to make that one. Yeah, no rush. It's not Easter yet. You got some time, right? <laughs> so, and then in the last video, as I said, we made this cute rocker card. 
So it rocks back and forth and it is an Easter bonnet. Actually, this is the one we made in the video. And then after the video, I made this one where I added the happy Easter greeting. Totally up to you which one you prefer or you could, you know, adapt your own. For this one, we used a free celebration paper. Right now, Stampin' Up! is having celebration. If you place a $50 order, before tax and shipping in the US, you can pick a free item. And this paper is the softly stippled paper, which is one of those free choices. So um, so head, heads up that the uh, project sheet for this one will be coming out next week in the project sheet email. But tonight we're gonna make a card and I'll show you the fun fold um, that inspired this card. So I received this Christmas card from um, viewer Mary Novak and she uh, I, I love the fold this is a Z fold card I think I've made this one before <laughs> made so many cards you guys I can't remember I think it's I think uh, my downline Rachel Tessman has made this and called it a scenery Z fold card maybe um, we're not really doing a scene but it is definitely a Z fold card and what I like about this is you do get a little peek if you want at the second side of the designer paper um, but it does lay out a nice scene on the it, the inside of the card is really cute because um, sometimes we focus so much on the outside of the card <laughs> that the inside of the card gets short shrift right so um, what I like about this fold is the inside of the card is super cute too so um, this is an older Christmas paper that um, that is retired from quite a few years ago but it doesn't matter right those pretty papers can be used anytime so let's go ahead and um, make this as an Easter card. So I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in, where am I, where am I, what am I doing? Oh yes, I'm bringing in the paper trimmer. Now I'm just going to warn you straight out guys, I am a messy crafter and I lose stuff all the time. It's right in front of me usually, but it gets buried. I set something on top of it. And so when I lose something and find it again, so you got to be careful, you're going to see all my messes and all my secrets. Okay, we'll raise this up here. Um, when I find it again, we all take a sip of our beverage. I have ice water in my cup tonight. Let me know what is in your cup and let's get our cardstock uh, cut here. I think, you know what? I love a white card. I love a lot of white space on cards. So we're gonna go, let's go white on this one. This is actually the thicker basic white. You could use either. I grabbed the thick one, don't know why. I Basic white would probably work as well. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this at five and a half by eight and a half. And that is going to, you're drinking tomato soup? What? <laughs> I guess that works. I never thought of it that way. Soup would work. So we have our eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. And we're going to score this. And I did type up the directions. You know what? On the rocker card, I totally had the directions typed up and forgot to show them on the camera. Oh, Jennifer, can you believe I did that? Of course you can, because I do it all the time. <laughs> I'm going to try to remember tonight. So um, we're going to score our cardstock again, eight and a half by five and a half. And we're going to score it at, uh, what are we scoring at? Susan? One and a half. You know what? My, my, uh, one moment, please. My, uh, this particular trimmer is getting older and my um, scoring blade popped out on me. So I'm popping it back in. There we go. So I'm going to score at one and a half. And then I'm going to slide it over to four and a quarter and I'm going to score there. Okay, so just two score lines, one and a half and four and a quarter. There we go. And let's grab a, a yeah, what is this called? <laughs> a bone folder. Oh, words are hard tonight, you guys. All right, so I'm going to fold a mountain fold on that center fold line. So again, it was eight and a half. I scored it four and a quarter. That's the center. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and score this right here. So we call that a mountain fold because it looks like a mountain. And then I'm going to fold on the second score line. This was the one and a half. And I'm going to fold backwards, which is a valley fold. You can see that forms a valley. And let's go ahead and give that a good crease. One thing I like about working with the thick basic white is it just has a really nice heft heft to the card there's a nice weight to it and it just makes it feel a little more opulent a little more fancy but basic white would totally work okay so um let's go ahead and get our paper trimmer back into play here and 
I'm just debating. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cut our designer paper. So the designer paper I am using, I'm using hot air balloon card for an Easter uh, paper for an Easter card. Is that crazy? <laughs> This is the lighter than air designer series paper. Yes, one pattern does have hot air balloons on it and you can die cut them out with the dies from the hot air balloon set and they're super cute. But don't let that hold you back on this paper. There is so, uh, you know, that is really the only one. All the rest are beautiful pastels, perfect for birthdays, Easter, spring cards, all of those things. So we're going to use this one with these fun polka dots. It's the same one we used on the box, isn't it? I don't know why this is just, this one just says Easter to me. <laughs> Although I, I do have to admit, I absolutely love these pastel stripes, which we used on the last craft noon on one of the alternate cards. All right, so I've got my paper here. Let's go ahead and cut it. I'm going to go really slow here because I messed this up in practice. <laughs> when I was making this card. Let's see if I can get it right now on camera. No pressure, right? So my paper is six by six. Um, the length on all of my designer paper pieces is gonna be five and a quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut down to five and a quarter right from the get-go so that the length is gonna be right on everything. So I'm gonna set this one aside. Okay, here's where I messed up before. I didn't, I neglected to turn it then. <laughs> So now I'm actually going to cut this six by five and a quarter inch piece of designer paper into three different individual pieces for our card. I love this paper too, Belinda. It's just so fun. It's, it's, yeah, I, I, I love pastels anyway. And this one is just really, really beautiful. Like this one is pretty uh, bright and happy for pastels, um, but it has some others that are, you know, just softer and more muted and it's just so springy, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this designer paper. The first piece is going to be two and three quarters by five and a quarter. Right there, so I've got that one done. And then I'm gonna make uh, another cut. This one is going to be at one and an eighth of an inch. Okay, one and eighth of an inch. Okay, and that will do we know when the carryover last chance list for the mini catalog will be released? Um, I believe that that list will come out on March 18th um, because that is uh, right after the Stampin' Up! on stage. So that is my belief, but I don't believe that's in writing anywhere. So take that with a grain of salt, but that would be my, that would be my guess. Um, so this is two and an eighth by five and a quarter because the mini catalog only goes through April. And so, um, yeah, you don't want to miss out on your favorites. The uh, celebration event only goes through February, though. So order now and get your free stuff. <laughs> all right, so we've got our six-inch paper cut into three sections, all right? I'm just going to give you one more recap on the sizes here. So they're all five and a quarter long. So this is two and three quarters by five and a quarter, one and an eighth by five and a quarter, and the piece left over is two and an eighth by five and a quarter, all right? So this one is going to go right here and that is going to go on the front of our card. Now the bonus here is, oh, the other side of the paper is going to show from the inside. So if your paper is directional like mine, you're going to want to rotate that <laughs> so that your clouds aren't upside down. Okay. Like I said, it's barely going to show, but still, I don't want it to be upside down. Right. So I've got my clouds right side up and I only want adhesive here. And that's a little hard for my brain to wrap around. So you know what? I'm going to actually just put the adhesive right on this flap. I want to keep it well in from the edges because some of the white border is going to show here. But that's just going to be a little safer for me, I think. So I'm just going to do some horizontal pieces of, just of adhesive right down the side. I'm using my seal. Right, there we go. And I'll just pop this in place. Okay, I got those clouds are going the right way. Okay, whew, I do. <laughs> so, uh, oh, okay, I missed Virginia's uh, question. Was it about uh, in colors? Yeah, Stampin' Up! always has new in colors every annual catalog, as Jennifer um, answered right there. But I'll repeat the question for those who were on Facebook. Virginia was asking... Um, if there will be uh, new in colors. And yes, every catalog we have 
um, five new in colors that come out and we have some in colors that will be leaving us and we will have some colors leaving us um, don't ask me which ones because I'm not going to remember on the fly here. I think Orchid Oasis will be going. Starry Sky will be going. Um, uh, Tahitian Tide. Mm, this is hard on my brain. Uh, Parakeet Party and one more. I don't remember what the other one is. Uh, you guys let me know in the comments because I'm blanking out. Jennifer probably knows. Sweet Sorbet. Oh, thank you. All right, there we go. Those are the ones that are leaving. So if you love those colors, now is the time to pick up those refills, the cardstock, stock up. All right, so I've got these two. All right, you guys, I've lost. <laughs> oh, here it is. Found it. Take a sip, everyone. I've found Mary's card so that I can follow along. All right, so then the last piece, so we, we did one here on the front. You open up the card, you line this one close to the spine. You just want to lay it out so that you have even spacing there between the two. And then, yeah, they are really fun colors, aren't they? I know it's always so sad when colors leave, but it's always so fun to have new colors. So then we're going to go ahead and put adhesive on this one and pop it into place here. All right. Oh. I'm sticking myself to the paper. Mm. All right. So now for Mary's card. There we go. So for Mary's card, she then cut a panel that was two inches by five and a quarter in a contrasting cardstock and layer that over it. And that's where you would write your message, right? Um, this one, my card base is white. So I think we might just leave this white as a place to write a message. What do you guys think? Otherwise, we could do we could do pool party if you really want to. But I think I think white is nice. So let's leave it white. All right. So now we're going to before we do the fun decorating part, we're going to do it a little different. Another decorating part. And that's over here. So on Mary's card, she did a piece of garden green cardstock and then a strip of uh, glimmer paper there to add a little sparkle, which is super fun. We're actually going to put an embossed piece back here because we can. <laughs> and I love embossing. I love what it does for my cards. Gives it a lot of dimension. Looks great. So let's bring in our paper trimmer here and let's grab a piece of cardstock and i'm gonna have to cut this one because i didn't have this one cut okay or did i did i cut one mm, i might have wait hang on hold the phone no that's a scrap for die cutting okay i don't think i did let's do it um so this is going to be um it's going to go right back here and it's going to be two and five eighths so that's one eighth past a half two and five eighths Five, five and a quarter. Ah, uh, my husband has hunted and gathered in his home with a takeout. Because <laughs> it's video night, and I think I don't need to cook on video nights. Do you agree? <laughs> I think it's a good night for takeout. All right, so we've got our two and five eighths by four and a quarter, or, excuse me, two and five eighths by five and a quarter inch piece. And that is going to go right in here. So now I need your help deciding what we're going to emboss on this because you know what? We have choices. I love embossing folders. There's, I don't, I don't know that there's any folders that I don't have <laughs> because I want them all. Um, I like options. I like options. Okay. So what do we have here? Here's what I grabbed. Not too many choices because, you know, we don't want to make it too hard. All right, so we could do the cane weave embossing folder. This one is just kind of a woven texture look. Okay. Or this is the um, 3D Basics embossing folder. And I love this one. that come, it's The pack comes with all three. There's like a texture. There's one that's like little flowers or almost like starfish. Um, but this one is the hobnail design. So it's like polka dots. So I think that would be really cute because we've got polka dots on our card. So which one do you think we should use, friends? Should we use number one or number two? Let me know in the comments which direction we want to go on that. And while you're voting, I am going to grab 
<laughs> put the die cutting machine on my cardstock. I'm going to try and track down what I oh found it. <laughs> Take a sip, everyone. I was trying to find my number four plate, which we need to be able to do this. So candy buttons. Yeah, that's exactly what they look like. So um, all right, I do see a few votes for number one, but more people are voting for number two. So we're gonna go with number two. A little polka dot action here. So let's put, so we've got platform number one. This is the stamp and cut and emboss machine. Platform number one and um, the specialty plate number four is, oh gosh, I just bumped the camera. Susan. <laughs> I get all excited about crafting and I forget I have a million cords and equipment and stuff here. Sorry. Sorry about that. All right. We're going to go ahead and crank through here. <laughs> all righty there we go all right i'm not gonna let the machine go too far away because it's got more work to do with our fun decorating but here is our hobnail design isn't that fun it's so much texture i love it all right you stay there you stay there okay and then this is gonna go right back here so just fun little pattern there and when they open it up all the way they're going to see more pattern so let's go ahead and put adhesive on this and stick it in place i i do admit i love a lot of white space on cards um this would be super cute with really any of these colors that are in the polka dots but i love a lot of white just a crisp clean look i guess okay so we've got a good start. Now we are ready to decorate. <laughs> you want to pop the bubbles? Yeah, this like it is like bubble wrap, you know, like uh, or candy dot dots, like Janine said. All right, so now we are going to work on decorating our project here. So let's bring in those excellent eggs, uh, Easter cards, Easter cards, Susan. <laughs> excellent eggs bundle we probably i don't know we might have just stamped the bunny because he's just so stinking cute um but we'll definitely be doing happy easter for the wording here so we're actually going to use this die right here i have to admit when i got this die i was a little perplexed by it because it you know you can see that it cuts openings and i thought well how does that work is it just going to have the open parts but i was looking online and i found a blog um carol buckaloo is the demonstrator's name her web her blog is inky b stampers and she did these eggs and pieced them together and i thought that's that's what they're for <laughs> so let's give it a go and i'll show you what i'm talking about so let's bring in our die cutting machine here <clears throat> Because I know several of you have ordered this Excellent Eggs bundle, and I want you to be able to know how to use all of your dies, right? Okay, so there's a whole bunch of zinnia action on my, <laughs> my cut plate here, so just ignore, ignore that. All right, so we've got our, um, we're now set up not for embossing, but for die cutting. So I've got my stamp and cut emboss machine again. I've got my platform number one again, but this time I've got the thin die adapter number two and cutting plate number three and another cutting plate number three. So let's bring in some cardstock and we're going to go through two times. So I've got, we're going to cut an egg out of the same pattern that we did our card base on you wouldn't have to you could do a different pattern in there that would be totally fine and we're going to cut an egg out of uh oh did i get dirt on there on this piece there i'll just flip it over uh, out of this piece of pool party so let's go ahead and start with that egg and this is just a scrap i picked up off my desk i'm going to take a wild guess and say it's like two and a quarter by two and a half you can see it's bigger than i need but that's okay. All right, so I've got one egg that's in pool party, and I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, you made the swing and sway card with the egg. Oh, that sounds super cute, Tina. All right, so we're going to keep all of the pieces that come out of this. Normally, we don't keep those bits that, that uh, come out of the die cutting, but we want to keep these. And then there's one more right here at the top. And then let's... 
All right, where's my take your, oh, found it. It's under the die set. Um, I take your pick tool. I'm just gonna poke out my egg here. So we've got our egg, it's got some die cut little zigzags in there and other decorations. So I'm gonna set that aside over here. And now we're gonna cut a second egg out of the polka dots. So, oh, let's, let's make sure I get a couple polka dots in these little bits here. Mm, so many choices. Here, we'll go right here. That looks cute. All right, so um, I you can see I cut a bigger strip of the paper. That gives me the flexibility to slide it around and find, uh, make sure I've got some cute polka dots um, in these open parts. And why do I wanna do that? Well, you'll see in just a very short bit here. So if you're using the paper to the maximum, um, you might wanna slide side to side to find the right spot. I don't care, I'm just gonna pick cute ones. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm not being very paper saving, I'm sorry, but I can still get, I can still get two more eggs easily out of that. Um, so I'm gonna go right here. I've got some cute polka dots in that opening and some in that opening. It's gonna look cute either way. All right, let's send it through. Oh, goodness. Oh, Jennifer, I did decide on which um, label set. I told her I didn't know for sure what label set we're going to do, but then I remembered this one. This is the scalloped contour dies. And I don't know, there's something about scallop that makes me think Easter and spring. So we're going to use this one, the scalloped contour dies, and we'll cut a frame from that here. So let's pull this back. And keep my extra little bits there. All right, we're gonna poke this one out over here. Now this is designer paper, so I wanna be very careful how I pull it out so I don't bend it all to heck. All right, so there's that egg, and then here is the, the pieces, which we're gonna be piecing in to our other egg. All right. So we're doing a mix and match, if you will. All right, so we've got those cut. This can go away. This one's trying to run away. Okay, there we go. Uh, where am I at? Uh, over here, eggs are over here. Now these, um, the eggs in the stamp set, this one is super cute. If you love to color, this is adorable. You can even stamp on it, just color one little bunny with the flower to make that kind of pop out. Um, and there are, the dies match those stamps, or you can also just cut the pattern paper in the egg shape and just make die, make eggs that way um, and decorate them with these different bits. All right, so we're gonna do one more thing and I did, uh, I had a piece of paper already to cut this from, ah, found it. <laughs> it got buried. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this fun scallop frame. We've had this contour scallop die, I don't know, we've had this set for a couple years now and um, they're really fun. Is there's one that can do the whole front of the card too. But we're gonna use this one and get those fun scallops into play here. All right, then we can put away the machine and we can build our card together. Can you turn the die sideways? Oh, could I have turned the egg sideways? I totally could have. That's a really good idea. <laughs> then I could have gotten maybe four out of that piece. Oh, you guys are so good at saving paper, aren't you? That would have been really smart, but no, yeah, didn't think of that. <laughs> totally could have done that. All right, so let's go ahead and, hey, Diane Bruni, how are you? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pop this right in here. I did want to remind you, I seeing my team members pop in here, I want wanted makes me remember to remind you that if you're interested in giving it uh being a demonstrator a try, this is a perfect time to do it because celebration is going on. And during celebration, you can get the starter kit and get some bonuses in it. The starter kit is always a great deal. I'm inking up Happy Easter in Pool Party Ink. Um, and I'm gonna stamp it at the top of this thing right here. Um, so the starter kit's always a good deal because you get $125 in product for $99. Shipping is free and you get some um, extra things in there like a free paper pumpkin kit and so forth. But you also get, um, okay, I've got my eggs here. <laughs> uh, during celebration, you can pick 
either a gla the glass mat studio or you can pick um, $30 in extra product. All right, so we've got our two eggs here. I'm gonna drop this down a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see that. Tilt this a little bit more. All right, so you could just do that. Like you could just do the eggs, right? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these bits that we cut out and we're gonna piece them in the eggs. Now you could glue those in. Um, I'm actually gonna be really lazy and I'm gonna use a dimensional to hold them in. So I'm gonna flip my egg over here and I'm gonna piece this in from the back side. Okay, so I've got that one in place. Now your take your pick tool has a putty end and that putty end is great for picking up little pieces of paper. Um, if it's not very sticky anymore, you just uh, advance it and just do a little bit because it goes goes slow. And so if you turn it too many times, all of a sudden you're gonna get like a whole inch. And then just clip off the end if it's not very sticky. And that'll give you some fresh putty to work with. Okay, so I've got those two pieced in. And then I just wanna add that last little bit on the top. Again, I'm working from the back here. Okay, and now, oh, don't you shift on me. <laughs> there we go. And now I'm going to take some dimensionals, which are not where they belong. Oh, I see them. Okay, found them. They're over on the side. I'm going to take some full-size dimensionals here, and I'm going to use those to uh, secure my uh, paper pieces, my paper piecing. This is called paper piecing when you do this technique um, into the egg. And it's also going to be how I'm going to stick the egg to my piece. All right, so let's flip it over and see what it looks like. <gasps> Look how cute that is. So we've got our pool party egg with some decorated with some little polka dots. And then our polka dot egg is going to have some bits decorated with pool party. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Flip it over, piece these pieces in. And again, you could totally just glue this on. If you watch my videos, you know I love dimensionals because they add um, dimension, <laughs> right? Like they say they're going to, right? They, they fully deliver what they uh, offer. All right, so let's put this, I got that one adhered into place. Let's get these two stuck in the openings. And they match perfectly because they came out of the same die, right? And so I'm just going to put a dimensional right there and put one right over here. Okay, there we go. So we've got our two little eggies. Now you could do uh, any of, you know, you could, we picked, I picked a pool party, but you could pick any of these colors and, and pick them instead. So they are, um, yeah, that's another way to do it is put a, a piece of paper on the back to kind of uh, stick them to. That absolutely would work. And then I've got my little eggs right here and those are gonna go on the front of our card like so. And let's go ahead and peel that off. Actually the uh, rainbow adhesive uh, backed dots would be super cute on this card. They're part of the Lighter Than Air suite of products. Got one egg right here. You do want to be a little careful when you peel off these backings that you don't pop out your paper piecing. Oh, that was a lot of piece. <laughs> pop out your paper pierce piecing. Um, how do I want to do this guy? Maybe up here a little bit. Like so. All right, so we've got our little Easter eggs. I'm going to raise this back up a little bit. And let's bring in our card. Oh, gosh. Am I going to be able to find those rainbow dots. Hmm. Let's hope, fingers crossed, I put them where they belong and that they're not floating around on my desk, which is probably, oh, I found them. They're where they belong. Yay. <laughs> hooray, hooray. So these are the um, rainbow adhesive back dots and we could use those to decorate this piece that kind of goes along with that whole polka dot theme we're, we're working with here. So let's bring in our card. We're gonna adhere this right on the front of our card. How cute is that? Um, you could adhere this flat. Um, I'm 
I am not a big fan of flat, so I'm going to add more dimensionals. All right, so I'm just going to put them right down the middle because part of this is going to hang over and I don't want to glue that shut with dimensionals. So I'm just going to put them right down the middle. I need a third egg as in the solid pool party to go in the back. Yeah, you totally could do that. I'm gonna go two eggs though. I'm just I'm 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 going rogue tonight, I guess, right? <laughs> as Sharon would say. All right, so there we go. There is our Easter card. Super cute. Let's add a couple dots. Hmm. I kind of think I got a lot of pool party going already. Maybe I should do some other colors. Let's let's see what we think. Here's this kind of a calypso coral color. All right. Oh, I got a dog hair in it. Okay, this is the drawback. <laughs> I love my dogs dearly, but dang, they need to keep the hair to themselves. Um, and maybe a yellow one is pretty Eastery too. And then uh, let's do this kind of pale orange color maybe. Whatever you want. You can use big ones or little ones. All the ones I used are little ones there. So, and there we go. Hide another egg on the back of the front. Yeah, you could totally add more eggs. Absolutely, 100%. You could add more eggs if you wanted to. But there we have. And of course, the card will stand for display because we love cards that stand for display, don't we? If you wanted to spruce it up with a little ribbon, you absolutely could do that. We've got the um, Celebration Free Crinkle Ribbon. That would be super cute right in the corner. What do you guys think? Ribbon or no ribbon? Let me know. Ribbon or no ribbon? I know some of you are very opposed to ribbons, so let me know in the comments if you think I should add the ribbon or not. I'm going to go ahead and close up my ink pad before I have an inky disaster. Um, you certainly could stamp. Ooh, could we? Could we though, Susan? Um, we could put a bunny inside. I think we should. I like this bunny. It's so cute. I just hate to leave the bunny in the box. <laughs> no ribbon. No ribbon. Yes, ribbon. <laughs> yes, add it. No ribbon. Um, ribbon is too big. How about twine? Let's see, no ribbon, ribbon. Oh my gosh, it's it's hotly contested on whether we were about 50-50 on yes ribbon or no ribbon. All right, let's, uh, but I'm not even asking about the bunny, you guys, because I think you would all agree that the bunny is a must. Just got to have the little bunny <laughs> right inside there. And of course you could do them in a brighter color if you wanted. I'm just going all pool party here. Um, and I don't know, I was going to say you could put thinking of you on the inside, but with this particular fold, it wouldn't quite fit. So you could do it if you put it on a label or something. So, um, all right. The last person was Deb Dunstan and she said ribbon. So we're going to, we're going to call it there. Oh, Mary Ellen says do a ribbon knot. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So let's see. And let's see if it is too big. We'll find out. If it is, I've got, I think I have another pool party option up here. Pretty sure I do. Let's try this one though. All right, I'm going to get my, oh goodness, Susan. I don't know where my, I have ribbon paper snips, but they are missing. But I have these big paper, big uh, paper shears that stamp it up, or, or ribbon shears that stamp it up used to sell. I got to get them even. <laughs> All right, so there is our, oh, I do like the bow, you guys. I do like the bow. All right, I know some of you uh, would choose not to do the bow, and that's totally fine, right? You can, you can make your choice. There is another pool party ribbon right here. Um, this one is called what? The, oh, I'm seeing every language, but the, uh, oh, yes, <laughs> this is a grow grain ribbon, so this is another one. This one's a full-on bow if you wanted to a little bit thinner ribbon. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the cheater knot right here and add this, but I think it would be cute either way. So let's grab a glue dot. Let's shake the camera. Oh I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. <laughs> let's not shake the camera, Susan. All right, and let's add glue dot to the back of our little ribbon knot. 
and pop it in the corner. And there we have our Easter card. <laughs> Too late, Deborah. I did it. All right. So I'm going to flip the camera here so that I can say goodbye and remind you that Crafternoon is this coming Saturday, 3 p.m. Central. Can't wait to share this new fold with you. So I hope you can tune in and join me on Saturday at 3 p.m. Central. I'll also be live Saturday night at 7.30 Central Time with another creative project. So looking forward to um, seeing you soon. Thank you again for making and sending handmade cards. And again, if you would like to get some PDFs so you can print out some of the projects you see in my videos, go to SueStampfield.com and click on subscribe. Take care, everyone. Have a great evening and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.